Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 42 and we haven't had a video in a while. I've been in Portugal for a week, but even then, there has been very little Superman news coming out. The movie is in post-production now, and it's kind of a waiting game for the next update. But that time has come. Over the last two weeks, we've had some updates about the Superman movie. So today, we are going to go through all of them. But firstly, I wanted to share a drawing that I found when going through my old belongings. This was my first ever attempt at drawing the Superman emblem as a kid. I must have been about five when I did this, but it's kind of cool to think that my love for Superman as a kid would continue into my adulthood, and now I'm talking about the production of the latest Superman movie on YouTube. For me, that's pretty cool. But anyway, now let's get on with the Superman news. So we start with the news that Sean Gunn's Maxwell Lord will appear in Superman. Now, we already knew that he was cast in the role, but we were unsure if it was for Superman or something later down the line, but according to the rap, it is for the Superman movie. And I won't lie, I'm not a fan of this casting. I'm not saying he couldn't do a good job, because I think he could, but this also could be the biggest example of nepotism. And I say could rather than is, because I'm willing to give him a fair shot in the role. Maybe he will crush it and James Gunn chose the right person, but if this role feels even slightly off, then it will reek of Gunn choosing his family over who is right for the role. And you don't want that to occur, especially for Maxwell Lord, who should be playing a fairly prominent role in the DCU. It's not like when Sean was playing Weasel, or even the character from Guardians of the Galaxy, Maxwell Lord will be controlling the Justice League International in the DCU, or at least in the Superman movie. So you gotta make sure the casting is right. Hopefully James Gunn has cast well, but I guess time will tell. Now Isabella Merched, who is playing the DCU's Hawk Girl, briefly talks about the suit. Oh, oh, well, there are some and, uh, pictures really online, online. However, I think James knows what he wants, and, and this specific suit is for this specific timeline in the story. And I don't know what else I can say, but I, I gotta say, the helmet was my absolute favorite. It's so sick, so badass, and it's perfect. So, her saying this specific suit is for this specific timeline in the story is an incredibly vital piece of information. She is basically confirmed that her costume isn't her main costume or something we should expect to see all the time. This costume is specifically for this story, and that plays into the theory that those costumes are made by Maxwell Lord to represent the Justice League International. That is why they don't look like their comic counterparts, because they aren't supposed to. It's like the X-Men who all wear similar costumes to represent that they are part of the group. And the Justice League International suits are supposed to look bad in the movie to be a visual representation of how Maxwell Lord's group isn't a good group of heroes. And I know people will say that's just me making excuses for bad designs, and sure, go with that. But watch the movie, and I'm 99% sure that these designs are on purpose, and by the end of the film, the heroes will be wearing their comic accurate costumes. And Isabella Merched's comments hints at that as well. She also talked on the Happy Sad Confused podcast with Josh Horowitz and said the whole movie is very loyal to comic books, but with a James Gunn twist. And that sounds great. You need to get a balance of connected to the source material, but also a feeling of unique storytelling and personality, and Gunn can do that, and hopefully Superman is his best movie so far. Now let's move on to some questions Gunn has answered. One user asked, Hi James, I wanted to ask you, will the character of Metamorpho be made 100% in CGI? And Gunn simply responded with, No and I'm glad about this. I feel CGI has become overused and you lose some personality from certain characters if they're pure CGI, and so I'm glad that Metamorpho won't be 100% CGI. Obviously, he will need it at some point when using his powers, but hopefully they use prosthetics for his costume to make him look as real as possible. Now, speaking of CGI, Gunn went very in-depth with his next answer. One user asked, The last few years, overworked and underpaid VFX artists have been forced to work with very tight deadlines, which has led to understandably bad CGI in a lot of big budget movies. Do you plan on taking a different approach with your DC films? 
And this is a great question, and Gunn gave an equally good answer, saying, If you do some research, you'll see my films have always taken a different approach, and I've always given my VFX artist collaborators time to do their jobs properly, and the respect they deserve. And the quality of the VFX in those films is uniformly great because of it, and because my friends at Weta and Framestore and ILM and more are amazingly talented. This is why we wrapped on Superman a year before release, and why they've been hard at work on many shots for months before that. This is why we start heartily editing during the shoot. It's why I prepare so vigorously, and why we only shoot finished screenplays. And Supergirl, which I'm not directing, is being handled the same way. I can't praise the VFX artists that help us create magic enough. And that is just brilliant to hear. We need the standard of CGI and VFX to improve, and the reason why it declined in the first place was because films were being rushed and there was an over-reliance on the VFX department. Gunn recognizes that and is supporting his VFX department. Sending over shots early on in production for them to get to work on as soon as possible and having a year for post-production makes it sound like nothing will be rushed in the DCU. They will make sure they have the right story and the right amount of time to execute that story and the best way possible. Now this does actually put pressure on Gunn's movie as this will mean the CGI will need to be basically perfect or as close to as possible. If it's not, then there is simply no excuse. Gunn's movies tend to have brilliant CGI in all fairness. I don't actually remember a time where I thought his CGI ever looked bad, which is exactly what you want. It's terrible when you're pulled out of the movie because the CGI looks weak, but that has never happened with a Gunn superhero movie. They've always had strong VFX, so we could be looking at a Superman movie with great CGI, which has always been the case actually. I don't remember a Superman movie having bad VFX for the time it was released in. The DCEU has had some shaky moments with other movies, but for Superman he has always had the best CGI, apart from Justice League 2017 of course. But let's forget about that. Now it's onwards and upwards. We have Creature Commandos later this year, and then Superman next July and apparently Supergirl will start filming in early 2025. So we will also be following that movie's production too. So some very exciting times ahead. And finally on today's episode of The Road to Superman, I wanted to let you guys know that I am starting to read comic books. If you have been here on the channel for a long time, then you would know that I never grew up reading comics. I never had the opportunity to, and so I've only ever loved DC through movies and TV shows. But one of my mates found a load of his old comic books that he read as a kid and has given quite a few of them to me to read, and a lot of them are Superman comics. So over the next few weeks I shall be reading them and giving my thoughts on them on Twitter. So if you want to know my thoughts on these comics, make sure to go follow me over on Twitter. After reading my first comic, called Superman Luther's Back Worse Than Ever, I can honestly say that I enjoyed it. As someone who had never read a comic before, I was pleasantly surprised by how much I liked it. The story was great and the art is brilliant and I'm starting to understand why people enjoy these comics so much. Obviously that is just after one, and I will need to read more to get a better understanding as to how I feel about them, but this is a positive start. So apologies to those of you who recommended me to read comics comics, and for me saying I wasn't interested. Looks like I may have been wrong. I didn't think I could get into them as an adult if I wasn't interested in them as a kid, but maybe I was wrong, so I am sorry about that. But if you guys have any suggestions for other comics to read, specifically for DC, and ones that may help me with the DCU, feel free to share them in the comments below. Now I've got my foot in the door, it should be easier for me to get into other comics too. But like I said, I will keep you guys up to date with which comic I'm reading and my thoughts on them. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!